Hey friends, how's it going? If, like me, you live on Earth, you probably live under a capitalist system. If, like me, you live under a capitalist system, you've probably been told all your life that any and maybe even all of us can get rich if we work hard enough. Capitalism ensures that we're fairly compensated for our work, right? If, like me, you've been told all these things your whole life, you might at some point have noticed a disconnect between rhetoric and reality. You may not have noticed the disconnect, of course. Some people build entire careers around telling us why capitalism is good for us. When I was in my early 20s, I listened to them. I read books about how to get rich. They were right, actually, that I could probably get rich if I really wanted to. But I'm just one person, and quite a privileged one. These preachers of the prosperity gospel mostly don't understand, in fact, they're paid not to understand, that a capitalist system simply can't make everyone rich, regardless of how hard they work, and that wealth has nothing to do with hard work or merit. For those who want to understand how the capitalist system works, welcome to my channel. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. It's pretty sad that any time I try to talk about how the system or systems we live under cause unemployment, poverty, homelessness, not to mention oppression, mental illness, and war, I get told I'm blaming everything on other people and encouraging everyone to stop taking responsibility for where they are in life. All I'm doing is pointing out how violence holds people back from getting rich. But that doesn't fit with the propaganda. Violence? What violence? We've been told all our lives that we're free, and capitalism is basically fair. So if there's anything wrong with us, it must be our own faults. We've been trained to blame politicians for political problems, and most importantly, to confine our blame to individuals. We need also, though, to consider the huge influence that hierarchical social systems wield over us. We need to know the enormous power of the ruling class and its propaganda. Propaganda shapes the culture in all kinds of subtle ways. If you've seen my video on culture, you'll already know that to an individual, culture is like water to a fish. Everywhere, in everything, affecting everything we do. In many places, Capitalist values have become ingrained in the culture. What do I mean by capitalist values? Well, what do capitalists want us to do? They want us to consume, pay taxes, follow the law. But the most important thing they need from us is our labor. If enough of us do their work, they will get rich. So a capitalist class will inculcate values like hard work into their populations. So we're expected to work hard to survive, however much total wealth there is in society, because we're also told that rich people must have worked hard, or else worked smart at least, and that's why they're rich, and therefore they deserve the wealth and power they've accumulated. Being rich is a common aspiration, again, something we're expected to strive for from a young age. A million books and public speakers teach us how to get rich. What this culture does not do is ask rich people where they got their money from. Questions like that might reveal the gap between rhetoric and reality. And we can't have that. 
Not only are we not supposed to question or criticize the rich, we're expected to thank them for giving us just enough of their wealth to survive, and even look up to them for having more money than the rest of us. But if capitalism really did what its proponents claimed, we would all be rich. Or at least, those of us who worked hard would be, and everyone else would be motivated. So why aren't we? Let's look at how people get rich. Fortunes are accumulated in various ways nowadays, of course, and it wouldn't make sense to talk about all rich people as if they were the same. But under capitalism, wealth tends to be created through other people's labor. Businesses, and therefore the people who own and operate businesses, take the full product of their employees' labor. Some of that they give back to workers in wages, but since management sets wages, it will inevitably be the minimum they can get away with paying. Capitalists, or the owners of businesses where we work, keep as much as they can in profit. Profit is like unpaid wages that way. Our work makes other people rich. And the only way we can make more than the minimum is if we work our way up the corporate ladder. Yeah, you, maybe you could do that, but not everyone can. Hierarchical organizations like corporations are pyramids. Only a few can make it high enough to get rich off wages. Besides, a lot of the income of people near the top of the corporate pyramid comes from things like shares, which most people can't afford. And for reasons of time, I won't get into the huge barriers faced by people who aren't cishet, able-bodied white guys like me. But it does mean getting a job and getting money and therefore surviving in a capitalist system is that much more of a struggle. So you could start your own business, right? Okay, but it costs money to start a business. What if your salary's too low to save money? What if even a second job wouldn't pay enough to save money? After all, plenty of people are working two or three jobs and still have trouble making ends meet. Besides, if you're working that hard for someone else, you're going to be too busy and tired to start your own business. Nor is starting a business just about having a good idea. Try taking your good idea to a rich investor and see how quickly your idea becomes our idea and then their idea. Mostly the people who can afford to start their own businesses, pay employees and so on, are the products of privilege. People whose parents had high salaries. You know, like the people who go on the news and to college campuses to talk about how great capitalism is. In the theoretical free market, it would be easy to start a business or just work for yourselves. But there is no free market. The market is hampered by all kinds of things, including incorporation fees, licensing fees, and taxes. And you might require accountants and lawyers just to get things off the ground. Then you need a phone, a computer, a website, business cards, a cool brand, and an office, at minimum. If you don't have good communication and selling skills, you're at even more of a disadvantage. The market is further hampered by all kinds of laws that raise the costs of doing business. People with money get laws passed to protect their health. The really rich business people have gained influence over the state to the point at which they now control it outright. So when we talk about laws, we're mostly just talking about the capitalist class's ways of getting even richer at the expense of everyone else. Let's say you want to start a business. If the state really believed in small business like it says it does, it wouldn't make you follow a thousand laws and pay a thousand fees and taxes when you're just beginning. But small businesses are a threat to big business, so owners of big businesses pass laws to raise the costs of doing business for everyone else. 
Big corporations can always afford a few more lawyers or to retrain their accounting team in more complicated new practices. Small businesses are crushed under the pressure. How could anyone compete when the law itself is against them? So starting a business is mostly for people who already have money. Most people don't have money, or not much, and they're even saddled with debt, so they're in negatives. They might have student debt taken on on the understanding they'd be able to pay it all back as soon as they got jobs. They might have debts for houses and cars, racked up because of the expectation that everyone is supposed to have their own house and car. They might have gone into debt because their culture tells them they're supposed to get married and spend thousands of dollars they don't have to do it. And we all have so-called public debt, i.e. debt governments took on and force everyone else to pay for, which means we'll be paying part of our salaries to banks for our entire lives. Being a landlord is another good way to make money, of course, but, again, it only works if you already have money. And what do landlords contribute, anyway? They don't build anything. They don't even usually maintain anything. They just own places to live and force you to pay them to live there. And a lot of people have criticized UBI, or Universal Basic Income, by pointing out that landlords would probably just raise the rent by that amount of money. Why wouldn't they? What's to stop them? If you really want to understand a capitalist economy, think of it this way. A few people have nearly all the money. The system they impose on us requires us to make money. That means we have to work for the people who have money and hope they pay enough for us to get by. Our work and our buying help make those few people richer, which strengthens their grip over the state. When politicians pass laws, or when police beat and arrest protesters, they're doing the dirty work of the rich. Capitalism is a zero-sum game, whatever they tell you. Rich people don't create wealth when they give you a wage. In fact, they don't really create anything, do they? Only workers and machines do. If it were a positive-sum game, the rich wouldn't mind so much raising the wages of their workers, because that would mean everyone would be better off. But what it would really mean is the workers would be better off and the owners would have less. They don't want that. They will take everything they can get their hands on. When their incomes go down, they cut salaries, benefits, and pensions. And that's been going on for decades now. As a result, even discounting inflation, workers' wages are stagnating, their savings are shrinking, and their debts are growing. They need to work harder for less money just to survive. Their work is still making other people rich. They're just seeing an ever-decreasing share of the wealth they're creating. We're told those people are still poor because their labor isn't valuable. But then why are their bosses getting richer? It's valuable work. Employees are just not organized enough to force their bosses to give them more. Take sanitation workers. They're some of the lowest paid people with some of the most dangerous jobs, but they're essential to modern life. The value they contribute to society is immeasurably more than that of CEOs and shareholders. But they're usually among the most vulnerable people, so they're desperate for work, so they get paid pennies and get told to be grateful for it. People like sanitation workers and millions of others among the working poor are guaranteed to stay poor. In their line of work, there's no chance of getting rich. Zero. Or even just bootstrapping their way out of poverty. Would you be one of the callous people who recommend thrift to the poor? 
Just reduce your spending. Yeah. Just don't buy so much food, right? Save up, right? Well, what if you can't cut your costs anymore? Get another job. Yeah, okay, except what job? Engineer? CEO? The system doesn't work that way. In fact, the capitalist system won't let them make it. If there are poor people who still need money to survive, they're forced to rely on whatever handouts, including low-paying jobs, wealthier people offer them. And getting stuck in a low-paying job is just one way people get trapped in poverty. What if someone was running a decent store but lost most of their customers because a Walmart opened up? What if someone's making all the right moves, but their truck or their taxi that they needed for work breaks down? What if it wasn't possible for them to save up the potentially thousands of dollars needed to fix or replace it? They might have to give up their work altogether and go to work for McDonald's, effectively joining the ranks of the working poor. What if someone was doing okay, maybe living paycheck to paycheck, but surviving? but their neighborhood is gentrifying and their landlord raises their rent. They could become homeless in a second. If you're homeless, you'll probably get fired. After all, we need someone who can shower and wash their clothes and shave every day. And these things happen to people every single day. Moreover, because we're all expected to get rich, and because it's so hard for most people to do so, money is a leading cause of divorce. And God forbid you get sick, disabled, mentally ill, or some other crippling problem, because then you'll have to count on charity in a culture that calls you a lazy scrounger. Money has several functions, and none of them is a reflection of hard work. Because in a capitalist system, everything is privately controlled, money means access, not just to luxuries, but even necessities. Conversely, no money means no access. Now, if everyone were suffering from deprivation, I would understand if we couldn't have everything we wanted. But not everyone is suffering. Not everyone is poor. A capitalist system means a class system. The rich are doing fine. And they'll continue to do fine regardless of how things are for you. Another thing money means is security. The more you have, the safer you are, as you can get security systems and guards, or even just move out into the suburbs. And of course, the rich are the beneficiary some might say the only beneficiary, of the police. The less money you have, the less you are able to defend yourself, which is why bosses bully employees, landlords bully tenants, and police bully homeless people. Money means control. It might mean controlling lots of land, restricting other people's access to it. Well, what if they need the food grown on that land to survive? What if that land was sacred to their culture? Having money might mean controlling big corporations that make major decisions that affect us all, but that we have no say in. Corporations restrict our access to things like food, housing, and medicine. Or, perhaps more accurately, police enforcing property rights restrict our access. It's not that the resources don't exist to give these things to everyone. It's just that these resources are privately owned by people not willing to give up control. Money also, of course, means outsized influence or even total control over government and politics, which is why most of the laws and all of the wars are for the rich. Finally, the propaganda we consume on TV, online, and on every billboard we, we can see anywhere shows us money also buys social values. Because these values of hard work and trying to get rich and 
blaming ourselves for not being billionaires are so deeply ingrained in us by the time we graduate school, we're bound to see ourselves as failures if we don't get rich. And that could be one reason this generation is so mired in depression. Just like the fear of losing jobs and homes and health and loved ones could be one reason why we have so much anxiety. Naturally, the rich and powerful, the people who decide on the messages we unconsciously absorb, want us to believe just working harder or something is the key to getting rich. Millions of people, especially in the middle and upper classes, fall in line and believe every word. You can recognize them as the people who say, work harder, get a job, or get another job, and so on. They scoff at things like empathy and kindness, because those things are for the weak. They're not interested in mutual aid, like an insurance pool with their neighbors, or unionizing. Their money will cushion any fall. They hate the poor and the homeless because their existence, their visibility, belies the myths and slogans we're supposed to have believed. It's fine to ignore them and abandon them, a good thing even, because they're the warts and pimples on the face of their country. And this propaganda, this cultural shell, protects them from learning about and analyzing the capitalist system and its messages. Scolding the poor for their lot goes back a long way. People with money tend to tell themselves they deserve everything they have. They build ideologies around this self-serving attitude, and they spread them to their sleeping populations. Sometimes they use the media, Sometimes they use complicated mathematical models, but whatever form it takes, the propaganda always ends up justifying unequal power relations. Even the tiny percentage of the working class that makes it rich often drops its roots and adopts the attitude, I got here by my own, so why can't you? They belong to the elite now, so they'll say and think anything to excuse inequality. So why aren't you rich? You've been robbed. You've been robbed of the full product of your labor by your bosses. You've been robbed of a home by landlords who force you to pay to live somewhere. You've been robbed by the laws that destroy your freedom to make a living and destroy what little wealth you can accumulate. You've been robbed by the police who keep this system in place. But it doesn't have to be this way. Capitalism is not natural or inevitable. It's artificial, and it can be eliminated. Without capitalism, we could all be rich. Imagine we flattened the corporate hierarchy. Instead of working to make other people rich, we would all share the product of our labor. The same wealth would exist, but it would be much more widespread. Imagine eliminating competition among firms and just producing for everyone. We would take away the unnecessaries of business, the inefficiencies, like accounting, legal, finance, and marketing departments. And research could be done in cooperation, making it much more efficient, eliminating redundancy. Imagine eliminating the laws that create corporations, the subsidies and regulations that keep big corporations alive. Imagine if we took back the commons, made everything open and public, made everyone into owners of the things that matter. Imagine no ruling class. Then no one would be able to amass the power necessary to kick people off their land or out of their homes or follow their laws or stop at their borders. No one would be able to restrict our access to resources. We would just share. Imagine abolishing the state altogether. Then we could eliminate class and bring about an egalitarian society where we produce for everybody, not just produce for a ruling class and hope we get enough of it for ourselves to survive. Imagine no money. 
No one will be able to restrict our access to things we need anymore. All those things you're imagining, they're possible. 